Good morning, uh, grasshoppers. Thank you so much, Nico, for that nice little kickoff. I was just listening to, and I believe he is, fellow St. Saint Petersburgian, Peter Fiddler on the 64 podcast, and he was talking about how life has changed for most of those in, uh, in view of uh, the last six months or so. It's crazy to think that it's been six months almost. Soon to be six months. Crazy. We have BM47 battling it out with Zephyr. Today I only missed one game. I believe I missed two games yesterday trying to get the stream started. Well, what a jettison. I tell you what, shaving works a lot better when you have a brand new razor. I was joking last night with a couple of friends who haven't shaved in a long time that they should go for a Gillette sponsorship. Ooh, this could leave a mark. Ouch. Would Queen G5 have stayed the course after the check we got H to H? I think it's pretty much over anyway. So losing our Queen wasn't entirely the reason why we lost that game. Zephyr played a really good game. Good morning, Tall. 86-67. We can be fine. This is so unusual here. He's sneaking up on the center, but is he? All right, fair enough, Tal. I think I should revoke his name. Playing chess like this. He only has one piece that can threaten anything. And we are going to put our bishop on the longer diagonal. I still don't get it in a way. Trying to decide the best way to accomplish anything in this position. We're going to do some remaneuvering here. Definite remaneuvering. Remaneuvering. So far, so good. Let's see which night goes where. That is the important question. If he's going to let me have queen to g4. Hmm. Wow.
For a pawn, he said. For one pawn, he said. Okay, Pasa. I think we're attacking a queen. I could be wrong, but I think we're attacking a queen. We may be attacking something even greater. I could be wrong. Between friends here. Victory. I'm only up the exchange. Did I have something else going on? Tall, you can never lose heart, man. <laughs> I'll tell you what, Nico, I did the same thing in, uh, in the COVID days, I really let, I really let myself get pretty shaggy. It wasn't just because I couldn't get a haircut. It was also because I didn't really have to shave. I did trim. I did trim a little bit. When the school year came around, I had to. All right. Let's get the plug in for the 64 podcast and the Peter Fiddler interview. Right now, though, we also have the Ben Johnson podcast for the Perpetual Chess podcast, which is probably the number one podcast, possibly the number one podcast. PA ran a podcast. Are we back into this um, very loud, but Okay, nobody is good. I picked up another playlist in theory of... I don't really want any copyright strikes. That's the awkwardness, right? The really, really serious awkwardness of, I don't really want to find out the hard way that one of my streams is not publishable. And YouTube, they're pretty stringent. I can't find my uh, brand new playlist that I added this morning. What's up with that? So recently added, now I want A to Z. Let's watch Saul versus Zephyr. Saul has Zephyr on the ropes. In general, we look at uh, pawn structure. Uh oh, there's a pawn being attacked with check though. And then a knight that's being attacked with a pin. And then a fork of an exchange as well. Check. I'm not sure now if uh, there's any hope after that move. Bring the king in. Saul is a very competent and good player. I would do not mess with Saul. It is time to relocate the rucks. Didn't quite manage it though. Oh, 
I might have played f6 to restrict the knight in that position instead of h5. But okay. You want to give back the exchange in return for a past h pawn that goes for glory? I don't know. Knight b4 threatens another pawn. Monte's pawn might be prudent. That doesn't threaten anything. It does guard, but it doesn't threaten anything. And now the attacks continue, but... Saul increases the pressure with two pass pawns on two sides of the board. Now we don't have knight c6 anymore. The eviction is now complete. If you do a quick shift, now that's not a good square for the knight. There's no way out. There's no way out on that square. We're abandoning ship on Zephyr. He has less time. And his opponent has not yet found a ladder mate. Maybe his opponent has found a ladder mate. No! I thought we were going to trade rooks. Check, check, and then we can have no counterplay and move on to the next round. Could cause a problem. Check. And? Check. No, it's mate in one! Check. Rook to c8 was mate in one without the queen check. check. Zephyr. Or Saul. Alright, it's official. He does seem to want to checkmate with his queen. Everyone, trade queens versus Saul. I've got your uh, checkmate right here. So we have 13 in the tournament. Two are paused. Three are paused. Mr. Moto and Dr. Mirkin. Good morning, Eric Hito. How are you, sir? So I learned something yesterday, Eric. I, I was listening to the 64 podcast. I don't have a uh, a link handy, do I? I bet I could find one. Where are my podcasts? Where's my super suit? I'm going to shift to this one here if this works. Stream safe for content creators. All right. Good morning, Lauren. How are you? Yeah, we're going to give her the non-theory version. Fascinating. Did I just do that? I just hung a piece by without looking. I just, I was doing some too many things at the same time. Good morning, Lauren. I forgot that I didn't do something. I just gave away a piece by accident. Not your fault. This is the streamer's uh, par paradox. <laughs> the streamer's paradox. This is another reason why you, as an earnest chess player and student of the game, should never, ever, ever worry about a random loss because there are far more serious people trying to promote this game who are losing much better than you in worse ways, like myself. I didn't, uh, I didn't pay attention and I paid the price. 
had nothing to do with the time control. I could blame anything that I wanted. But I'm just me, unfortunately. I am in this... In this moment that I have to pay attention. Yeah, stuff happens, you know? I mean, there are a whole bunch of factors. If you, if I were looking for excuses, I'm sure I could dig one up. Worrying about the Ukraine war. Not enough sleep. <sighs> no, uh, but seriously, though, Judith Polgar mentioned... Oh, yeah, there you go. Make sure you split it with me, please. I'll take $2.50, thanks. <laughs> Should you win $5. Now, that wouldn't be the profit on a $1 ticket, but I'll take the $2. <laughs> but, uh, Judith Polgar mentioned on more than one occasion that she'd never beaten a healthy opponent. That opponent who'd ever had enough sleep. That opponent who didn't have personal problems, probably. It wasn't undergoing stress. She'd never beaten anybody who was actually prepared to play the game. All of her opponents she won against had other excuses. Even Gary Kasparov, I'm positive. Especially Gary Kasparov. Even saying that you played badly is also a form of excuse. It demeans the opponent's good play. <laughs> the Baltic Sea Air. I'm telling you, if I were near the Baltic Sea Air, I would not want to be sitting at a chessboard. I might want to be walking near the beach. We have Pegasus in the house. Ron is here. Good morning, Ron. As well, he should be mocked for it. Oh, man. I hope to experience it someday, Nico. The M47. That is the least of your worries. I'm watching I Am Hungry. Oh, speaking of which, I have to bring up that. Uh, and she is on to... 1,000 as her quest, right? And I'm like, this is crazy that she's going one at a time, right? 100 rating points at a time. It's going to be climbing the ladder. But it's what you have to do. Ironically, if it makes you feel better, it is what you have to do. How many streamers can I add? So, getting back to my point before, on the 64 chess broadcast, they had Chessable CEOO, Geert, and Geert was uh, discussing with David that the instructional market versus chess.com, the entertainment market, Chess.com is a lot like Fox News, you know? They draw at everybody. But the instruction market is 2%. The chess instruction market is 2% of the entire chess community. 2! 2%! So if you can imagine that someone has 600 viewers, I am hoping to have 12. Take a quick peek, for example. Let's just pick someone who's very entertaining, like... Anamaya has 71 viewers. 
Best Bay has 68 viewers. I have five. I'm way above par there. That's a different type of entertainment. I'm looking up the stream. Chess Bra has 148 viewers, and I'm at five. I'm above 2%. Best Bra. Anna Kramling, 413. And I'm at five. Remember, though, they are looking at uh, Olympiad, so they have a different demographic today. All right, we're back to Zephyr and Tall here with the last eight seconds to 15 seconds. Last game, Spotlight. Max Chesscom. Oh, I see Kingslayer. Oh, man, I played a player who is under handicapped. The league director was not doing their job. He is theoretically lower than me. And I have another player higher than me by two levels on my team. He ran over both of us. He doubled up. And I think he allowed the two of us to win four games across 15. And he's lower handicapped than us. We had to actually spot him games across 15 possible games. Uh-oh. Thank you. For a moment, I thought it was Nico. What was I looking for here? Let's do the socials. But the 64 Chess Podcast, I want to expand my podcast listing. MaxChess.com I'm not sure what you hope to attain by H3, sir. Because I'm playing the Grunfeld. I don't know what he's doing. Is H3 really useful? <laughs> Is H3 useful? I don't know. Let's get our bishop out. Really? Are you going to take that? <laughs> Are you going to take that? Let's keep up the pressure while we're at it. I've lost to Max Chess in so many ways. There's no reason why this way should be any different. All right, moment of truth, everyone. Where is he really headed? Can I? Can I strip him of his Wow. I don't know if I can strip him of anything now that I look at it. Yeah, good game. We're going to have to do some uh, rapid training. I'm 
Now, what is going on with my... My chat box is missing. Ah, found it. Hopefully I didn't lose my YouTube for that mainstream updated. Let's take a quick peek at our socials to see if we lost our YouTube. Nope, we're still streaming. All good. Unfortunately, I'm not reading the chat as much or as well or as quickly. So we're going to start adding our small instructional parts to this. Sounds like my power supply fan is laboring down there. I'm a little worried that I might need to do some maintenance on my desktop. That's the best thing about a desktop as opposed to a laptop, is that you can do your own maintenance. For the 64 podcast. Rogan Joe Sloan. Good morning, sir. Welcome to the Kingslayer. I still keep calling him Rogan Joe Sloan, even though he's changed his name officially to Slaying Kings. Beast mode, sir. Beast mode. How are you? Good here. Good morning. Let's make sure we are where we are. Does anybody need me to refresh so that you can get in? Not bad. We're building back up to 15. It's okay. Pan Pacific is well represented at this moment. Pan Asian, the Oceanic. Hold on, I'm trying to figure out what's the best way, what's the best politically correct way to refer to this region of the area of the world without accidentally lumping them in with Pan Asian, Pan Pacific, Oceanic, the Oceanic uh, part of the world, Oceania, that's the best way. It's so romantic to me. Oceania, the a part of the world I've not been to. Asia, Oceania. And that spelling as well. <laughs> All right. I don't think I can play any worse than what I've been playing. I have to decide what I'm doing. I think it's because I'm studying chess. Honestly, I do believe that it's because I'm studying chess. My opponent... Rogan spelling. <laughs> Let's see what we get here. Bishop c5. Come on. Bishop c5. Now, I was actually just looking at this one. But I'm going with the old-fashioned way, by the way. I'm going with the old-fashioned way of having an advantage in this position. Just bringing my pieces out fast as possible. Maybe billiards did have its effect. Could also be the wine. Might need to change wines. The England Gambit is legit bad. It is legit bad. I don't even know what to say.
I don't even know where to begin on this one. I don't want to lose my queen. Can I lose this? That is the question. Can I lose this? I haven't been in this position in a long time. So we have rook c1. Knight to d4. I mean, he moves the same piece 15 times. I might as well be able to move it once, right? And it looks like Rook to B1 is a real threat now. And... How do I keep attacking him? Let me count the ways. All right. There were so many ways to attack him. I didn't even know where to begin. But now I have a legit other way of attacking him that he may or may not appreciate, depending on whether or not I get to play. I think we are really overworked here. How many pe This is a free piece, right? I admitted he kept me from winning his queen. I was trying to trap the queen with uh, bishop c1 in some lines. But I will take the free piece with the only way out being consolidation station folks maybe he wants to trade queens <laughs> i have never seen caveman chess at this level I honestly have never seen caveman chess at this level before. This is like atomic level caveman chess. Uzwal, we need to bring out the rest of our pieces, Raj. Raj, we need all of the pieces. I was expecting the draw offer, actually. I know it was a mouse slip, but the position was lost before the queen was lost. All the pieces have to be developed before you can start playing chess. You cannot bring out two pieces and start playing. This is one of the earliest lessons. Shortly after the four move check checkmate start start blah, 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 starts failing, you have to use all of your pieces. Pieces. Or a piece, how about that? Unfortunately, I'm not coordinating my pieces either. I'm not a master today, apparently. I am really, really sucky. But we are going to restart the stream for Gambits and Glory. I decided that if we're 2% of the market, right? I need to do start I need to start doing more entertainment streams. It's 
study streams, things like that are a thing of the past. It's going to be an unwritten rule, though, for the diehards, of course, that I will always do a study stream for five gifted subs. But for all the new users, I gotta get Eric Keto's Kramnik out today, right? Who am I behind on? I'm really behind. I need the 24 hour tall study stream today. Could today be the day? My parent, my family would be very upset with me, but I think today, if any day, is going to be the day. Well, it's Friday night. What do I have tonight? <laughs> Absolutely. Now, I also have Purdy, Hillard Person, My Memorable Games, and... I'm drawing a blank here. My Memorable Games, Purdy, Tiger Heart Person, Memorable Games, and of course, Kramnik for you. I feel like I'm leaving one out. And I have to do some chessable work. Oh my God, I'm so far behind. You are, you are. You are, you are. You are, you are. <laughs> Need to finish uh, chessable books for students. Aye, aye. I don't know that I... I should just pound out Kramnik one time, right? Since you're here. But Ron is also here now. Gambits and Glory, I think, is going to be the series that we do next. Gambits and Glory. Forget the uh, educational stream. Already I said, forget the educational streams and we have 12 viewers. Just like that. Poof. No more chess education. 2% of the market for chess education. 2% of the market, 2.8 to be exact. Chessable has like 3 million to chess.com, the entertainment industry. Chess.com has 140 million viewer base, I should say, user base. A good and preferably, and more preferably, a sideline weapon versus the French defense. I'll give you one right after this. Good morning, Nico. I'm going with my old Karo Khan. This is the standard way to beat any unorthodox opening. Just when I thought my man in St. Petersburg, Nico Demodius. Nico, on the other hand, is all right. I need to target that bishop. I'm going to continue targeting those squares. I'm going to continue targeting those squares. Trying to get my pieces out. 
in a relatively normal developmental fashion. Uh-huh. I have to grab space. Space. How did I know that was coming? But I attack another one that's attacked by... I'm attacking another piece with a pod. This means that two of his pieces are attacked by pods. Something does not sit right. <laughs> I'm gonna attack... I'm attacking another one. Is there a way to get another piece attacked without... No, unfortunately, all the further attacks are answered by Chak, unfortunately. It was fun while it lasted, though. <clears throat> oh, it doesn't matter to me. The viewer count is always wrong, by the way. I agree with you, though. When I was always less than 10, uh, that was probably the way to look at it. What is that position? <laughs> Nico and I were entertaining ourselves with the most possible pieces hanging without actually capturing anything. Unfortunately, at the end, I might have had to capture something with check, so I, we couldn't keep it up. Because I would have been attacking the kick. That would have stopped the, uh, the sequence. I'm trying to think of an opening for Nico that he can play to incorporate B4 regularly. I believe that he could incorporate B4 regularly in like several different lines, like the Nimzo Larson instead of B3. So you can play Knight F3, E3, and then B4 at the right moment. You could even play Knight F3 and B4. You could play c4 and knight f3 and b4. Just to at least get the foot off, get the opponent off to a different foot. On average. I'm so sorry. I did not play in round four. I did not play in round four. Are you talking about round five, maybe? No. I don't know what you're talking about, Pegasus. Oh, man. I think Pegasus is being a little funny here. Round four. There might be something that I'm overlooking here. Oh, the one with Queen B2 for black. Yeah, against the Queen B2. Yeah, that was round five. You're right. My fourth game was the fifth round game. Absolutely. I didn't play the first round, as he's pointing out. I didn't even check that one for the uh, opening, uh, for the, how I did in the opening. Raj. So far, let's just check it with our uh, opening book over here. We'll increase the size of the opening book for a moment. So E5 is a legit bad move. 
endorsed only by Eric Rosen. Or was it the Nachmanson Gambit? Is that what it's called? Steven Zerk versus Amon Hamilton. Oh my god. OMG. OMG. I'm going to put this into the 1, 2, 4 repertoire. Daniel Dubov versus Savelli Golubov. How can Black actually make this playable? Only Daniel Dubov could be risky enough to make this playable. Let's insert that one. Yeah, Bishop to B4 is the known way. I want to see this game. That much is true. Oh, Daniel Dubov tried to play. Bishop to G5 against this. He didn't want to play the main line. Wow. I know my time is probably running and I probably have a game. You're using the iPhone now. Yeah. I feel like uh, Norway is more of a, a of a Samsung country, honestly. When I was in Norway, I felt everyone was using Samsung. Yeah, the threat here after E4 is that I'm trying to play bishop to C1. Does the queen have any squares after bishop C1? Let's just say if they play D6... Bishop C1 wins the queen. Pretty cool, I have to admit. I'm finding all the best moves. Fair enough. Let's head back to our tournament. Uh-oh. What does that mean? It means Lauren won the tournament. At this hideous time control that she can't stand. <laughs> the Neo Grunfeld theory. Nice work, Lauren. Let's put this back to uh, to normal size. Congratulations. Oh, wrong way. Thank you for following Zomniac. Zomniac. Which game was this, Lauren? One second, Zamanak. Do I want to play? Do I want to learn? No, I want to. I want to be an entertainment streamer. I realize now why uh, Nemo didn't want to go to the Olympiad, because you can go to Los Angeles instead and hang out in a content house. That's the way to do it. Tapas new. Hold on, I haven't, I haven't shouted out Tapas now. I'm, do, I'm overdue for him. He raided me at the end of my stream the other day. Tapas new, Kingslayer Sloan, and the Legends of the Stream. While I'm at it, I'm going to put the Legends of the Stream in. Because I was looking for... Bianchetta. Yeah, I'm looking for all of those that I missed. Chess Bay, Bianchetta...
There we go. Chess Bay and Chess Bay. That's way too close in name, right? V Chess Bay as opposed to Chess Bay. And then uh, Fionchetta. I'm putting all of these in the panel on making chess cool. On my about page. Mad Quick Chess. Rogan Joe Sloan is not there. I have. Make sure that I get. The hard part is the making chess cool part. And now I have to do the weeding out. We're going to do the. We're going to do the swipe right randomness. Now we just finished with our viewer uh, playing session. Dominic, are you on Lee Chess, sir? I'll give a random three, two. What is your username? What is your username, sir? I'll do one more because I missed my uh, I missed my first round game. Caleb McLean, have you ever heard about internet security? Oh, I said I would tell him after the game. You're absolutely right. Absolutely right. Did you play the French this tournament, Digi World? Where are you? I actually had uh, Joel Benjamin follow my recommendation as well. Oh, you weren't an attorney. Sam Zuani. All right. Let's go back to... Um, can I put this in a study? I'm just going to put it inside of another game. Did I play E4 today? Anybody? Uh, Lauren likes to play E4. I'm going to put it inside one of Lauren's games. Let's take a look. Her anti-Grunfeld game here. Is this the one? The Neo Grunfeld study. First, we just I wanted to give her the credit for this one. Yeah, that's an awesome line. The Knight C6 pawn sacrifice. Wow, White never had a chance here. Let's just go back to when White had a chance. White is just losing this game right out of the get-go. Knight A3 was not the best, even though Black is better anyway. Black has just has more activity. Probably shouldn't even saw shouldn't even try to save that rook, honestly. Uh they missed Knight takes C4 at least to try to stay in the game. Another out of toast. Wow. And everything falls. Everything falls. The absolute craziness how everything falls. And they lost a piece instead. Nicely done. All right, back to Digi World. Um, personally, my favorite offbeat sideline against this is the Steinitz variation against the classical. First, I'm going to show you where it comes from. Then I'm going to show you where it comes in. Now, interestingly enough, you're worried already that you can't get there from here. But Steinitz had this variation. Where he takes on c5 now black has two targets usually black targets the pot on e5 first don't worry we're gonna we're gonna make this a sideline that you can reach because i have won this game many times and then we have to actually deal with the threat to the b2 pot to the f2 pot 
and then white castles here but you look very feverishly at your uh, b2 pawn you really do look at that very closely and i have won this game in tournament games as many as three times i think i won this in real over the board tournament play three times my students have won with this over the board three times so basically i've won it in all ways uh if they play d4 to try to stop their queen from being lost now they have to play king to d8, and then we're threatening bishop c3. So if they play d4, we actually play queen to e2 and rook on a to e1. That traps the queen. No escape. And of course, many people have lost to the queen the old-fashioned way in this manner. Ah, what if D queen takes b2 is not played? Yes. No, you just have a lot of peace played, did you? Well, you are a peace player. This is a peace play uh, puzzle. So the thing that you're having difficulty with in the... Oh, sorry. I went down the wrong path. No, what if knight c3 is not played, you're saying? Now, knight c3 is your move, too. This is the real kicker. Knight c3 is your move too. And then you can run into this sideline. Now, almost everything here is very equal, but you get to play more often with these positions than your opponent. d4 is theoretically the best move, but many opponents choose knight f6. And we reach the same position where this is the move. If they try bishop to b4 or anything like that, this is not a position for bishop to b4. Interestingly enough, you're just going to keep targeting the king side. So here we are, and now we're back into the Steinitz line again. Interestingly enough, it, it did trans transition here. It does show French defense, Steinitz variation right here. It's pretty crazy that it got the opening right after a transposition. Because back here, it was a two knights variation. So I'm a big believer in the two knights. It's, uh, there are several books on this. Now, what if they don't take? Everything is uh, is relatively equal, but you have a lot of peace play for white. So knight c6, bishop f4, bishop c5, bishop d3. Black's best move before he castles is to play f6 to ef6, knight f6, and then you just castle. But notice... You're the one getting all the play here. They have these two pawns that are on the center files. You have a target. I have been playing this line. Yeah. And over the in in uh, blitz play, I've won the queen a lot more. And over the board chess, I've won it at least three times. So yeah, you get this position, and I like this line a lot for white against the French, and I recommend it for youngsters and new new players to the game as a fun way to at least find out if the French defense players know. Oh yeah, let's finish that story. You reminded me of the Greek gift. This poor uh, girl, I was uh, this is uh, the Iranian contingent, uh, Arientari, Anita Golami, and an Arientari's uh, entourage there to a certain extent. Anita Golami had not been castling the entire tournament, right? She's not been castling, and then I had to play her in round five of the Oslo tournament. So in this position, Arikido, we reach this position. Bishop to d3. Queen to b6, she plays queen to b6. And after I castle, so in this position, she castles. And the whole tournament, I've been telling her that she needs to castle if she wants to be a better player. So I couldn't play I couldn't play 
what I wanted to play here just because I had been telling her to castle the whole tournament. And then I realized, of course, why she wasn't castling. Now, yesterday I commented on Emmanuel Berg being the coach of the Norwegian women's team, and then he plays the French defense, and he has all of the women playing the French defense. So she was being coached by Emmanuel Berg to play the French defense, and she was not that high, since she was not that highly rated, she was decently rated when I played her, maybe about 17 or 1800 or so. But in general, I'm like, you got to play a better opening than that when you're an up-and-comer. The French defense is not an opening I recommend for rising stars. You give them an opening where they can put their pieces on good squares and they can learn to fly. Don't play an opening where your wings are clipped. Your wings are going to be clipped in the Black Lion, the French defense, the London. You're basically clipping your own wings. And you're limiting your possibilities and learning the richness of chess and enjoying everything about chess. So it's really not worth it. I know you want to clip your wings because you feel like chess is more tackle tackleable. If that's a word, right? you should really be trying to get the most out of it and this line has served me well this will come up in my memorable games by the way Pretty crazy. Oh no, is that what happened? <laughs> I hear you, man. I'm always playing you during a work meeting, so I'm not sure how this works out. If you consider this work. If you consider this work. trying to add more men to the making chess cool but chess coach Andres doesn't completely fit oh opening advice I know we were definitely talking uh, about I definitely gave some opening uh, recommendations and I was trying to actually think of because I know your affinity for B4, I had, what's the right word? Basically, I had, what's the right word? I had recommended lines where you can play B4, like Knight F3, E3, B4, or Knight F3, e, E3, C4, and B4. I was thinking about that. But in general, I recommend the sideline of the two knight. Now, most of the time, your opponents are not going to play F6. Most of the time, they're going to they're gonna hedge their bets with moves like A6. You're going to get way ahead with either castles or queen E2. And they have to go B5, and you're just going to castle then. Now, you don't have to worry about the onslaught to a certain extent because all this, you know... They have to find moves like bishop e7. What's it recommending here? Bishop to b7? Honestly, this is just an equal position. I would probably play bishop to g3 here. Bishop g3, king h1, and I might go for the, uh, the push. I'm still waiting for them to play this so that we can get our knight. Look on f to e1. Now, there's another way to play this particular position. How far back do I need to go? That was recommended by revolutionizing the French or the Moscolenko. 
I think it's in this line. Queenie two, castles. Castles queen side. And then you start shoving the H pawn at him. So you get to have a lot of fun this way as well. Oh, you're thinking about black. <laughs> well, if you really love B5, then I would consider playing the Benko for a while. Almost everything, the Benko is bulletproof to a great extent. Let's go back to the main tournament page for a moment. Um, I'm going to choose a game where Nico is black, if I can find one. Yeah, he won this game. Oh. Yeah, honestly, I like the idea of the Benko. If you, yeah, it's resilient. I mean, you're going to get tough positions no matter what opening you play. But given your pretense, if you really want to have the theme of giving them the what for down the B file, I would certainly do that. I would certainly go with the Benko. It even begins with a B. It's an opening name that begins with a B. Good morning, Jeff. VIP in the house. I dug out for a student one of my favorite really old books the other day. NCO really does a great job. This is one of the greatest one volume opening manuals of all time, I have to say. This is, Lauren, one of the greatest one volume opening manuals of all time. I was looking up everything in this and we were building a repertoire for a student who is over the board crossing 2000. And I told him that if he wants to attain mastery, he's going to have to start shaping his opening repertoire better toward 2200. But literally he's gotten to knocking on the door of 2000 in strength without necessarily playing any openings. Uh, uh, at any depth, like he changes all the time, like uh, he switched up against uh, the King's Indian so many times between the same as the classical, the Trojan variation, the not Trojan variation, because everyone knows what I like to play against it. And I would like to play the Trojan variation again. Also, thanks to the 64 Chess Podcast, I dug down my... Uh, Chess Calculation Training by Romain Edouard. He has three volumes. One on middle game analysis, which I'm definitely going to work on. Two is on end game analysis. And the third one is on legendary games. So all of the uh, positions uh, for training. Now the awkwardness is that it is absolute and utter calculation and then look up the answer. So it's follow. This is the legendary games. They're all the same, except that in this particular one. So I was actually hoping to get a little bit more out of it in the calculation instruction department, because I'm looking for books to complement this one. And I am going to be working on that part of today. The Volga Gambit, yes. That is correct. It is the Volga Gambit, based on the Volga River. Benko was a Hungarian refugee and his name was stricken from the books when he uh, left for the West. I don't think his name was able to be used for a while because he he left the Soviet Union early on when the tanks rolled over in the 1950s. When the tanks started to make a parking lot out of Hungary, not unlike how Ukraine is going under now, Oh, that sounds so beautiful, Nico. Are we? You, you and I are connected on Instagram. I'm going to take a photo of that, sir. I would love to see some nice photos of the Volga River on Instagram. If anyone doesn't follow me on Instagram, I will reshare his photos in a story. Play the Volga on the Volga, right? Exactly. No, it's such a beautiful thing. 
I did not realize that St. Petersburg was on the Volga River. I'm going to put my socials up just in case anybody wants to do this. I'm going to try to do also more short videos. I was thinking about it on Instagram. Sure. Although we were actually doing games from the tournament and we were talking about openings chess with Ovi. Uh, you might need to whisper it to a moderator or to a VIP like Nico. Oh, you're not in St. Petersburg. Oh, that sucks. I was going to say, I did not know that the Volga, that St. Petersburg was on the Volga, but it might, well, might well be. Big Volga. So yeah, if you whisper the link to me, But yeah, let's just take a quick peek at the line. Oh, sorry. The line that I was looking at. C5. And also, this is a remedy against everything. Um, so this is the line that I played Nico against the the the, uh, the London. You can still play C5. And you can still play B5. The winning percentage for B5 is 31% among Masters. So you get to play b5 in this position all right let me see if i can track it down hold on one second i'm going to try to bring it up in the right window somehow that's the tricky part chess with ob versus good train so Nico, yeah, I like this line a lot. I just wanted to finish with Nico. Yeah, and you're basically playing B5 in all the right places now. So you're, you're going to enjoy life a lot better. And you get to play B5 because there's nothing wrong with B5. Inherently, there's nothing wrong with B5. It's just that you have to play it like everything at the right time and in the right place. I realize my screen is not all the way across. So yeah. And on average, I love the Banco. I love the, the best book that was written and I met him during the London 2018 World Championship. The author of this book. This makes it a complete repertoire by Nikolai Patterson. He has a lot of instructive games. P e d e r s e n by the Benko Gambit. He covers almost everything that you might need to know against the English people who decline the Benko, and he doesn't really cover the London. But the London, you know, you don't need to study for the London. Ironically, that's the that's the least the least dynamic opening that you should ever have to worry about. You just have to have one pet line. So we're getting back to chess with Ovi with good train. I just needed to see it. That way I know that I'm on the right one. Chess. We'll head over. And we'll scroll back to... Uh, let's see. This was played 19 minutes ago. There it is. I'm going to hide all of this. And I'm going to try to hide that too. That way I don't get to see anything. All right. Well, you beat another master. Good job. Oh, the link is in chat. The tricky part about the link is getting the link to come up into the content window in the right one because I have two screens. Whenever anybody sends me a link, it literally pops up somewhere, anywhere on the computer. So I just need to see the game and know what I'm looking for, and then I'll just find it over here. So I apologize. Wow, this is pretty extravagant, don't you think? 
So B5, I am very tempted to just crack him wide open and start attacking these weaknesses with A4 and C, C3. And in this particular position, chess with OV, I don't believe in moving the same piece twice. I love your ambition, though. But you've got, a, you've got some Swiss cheese happening here. This does not necessarily guarantee you anything but a space advantage, but it looks pretty good. Looks good. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it. Love this move. I still like this move better because the C, the C pawn is more valuable than the B pawn. In, a, in general, there's an article by, uh, there's an interview with Feel bad that it happened. He broke up with that. <laughs> oh no! I didn't realize this was not a chess conversation. Got it. No, you should not be nice. No, it's business. It's absolutely pure business. You go for the throat. This is why you don't necessarily want to mix relationships and business either at the same time. Basically, if I could make an MCD shirt, what doesn't kill you makes you stronger. <laughs> uh, who doesn't checkmate you makes you stronger, basically. So, getting back to chess. Um... Keith Arkell even mentions, you know how I mentioned that a knight on the third rank is worth a knight, a knight on the fourth rank outposted by a pawn, that is. Like in the Sicilian defense, even, even a firmly placed knight on d4 is worth a bishop, and a knight outposted on the fifth rank is worth more than a bishop. Therefore, many bishops need to take the knights on the fifth rank that are outposted, and a knight on the sixth rank is worth a rook. Notice how things change in value. <coughs> At the beginning of the game, the pawns have the same ascension in value. These two pawns are worth more than these two pawns. Because these two pawns have the ability to control the center. And because these two pawns have the ability to control the center and push pieces out of the center and to grab more space and to cramp your opponent's style, these two pawns are a little bit more valuable than the pawns on the outside of the board at the start of the game. Now at the end game, when you need outside pass pawns, now the shoe has switched feet. Oh no. No, no, what doesn't? Oh, that's true. I'm not sure you felt stronger. But normally I try to give them a little lesson afterwards, you know what I mean? He's probably not supposed to be playing in your section. Pawns, by the way, no, it's not the openings. Let's get that word out of your vocabulary. Just extract that word openings out of your vocabulary. Because people who claim to be London players... Are not necessarily chess players we are chess players first and foremost the openings are just tools if you need a pair of scissors to open something you cannot say no no i'm a screwdriver guy hand me the pack of hot dogs all right i've got my screwdriver right here i'm a screwdriver guy <laughs> no, you gotta know how to use a pair of scissors you can't just use one tool for all occasions so therefore even if you're a sicilian player or a french defense player or whatever no i know but pawn structures and pawn yeah it happens with younger players i'm assuming that you are you know sub 25 in age to a certain extent i'm assuming that you're younger than 25 years old you're in the first quarter century of your life Oh, you're 29. Yeah, well, okay. Then you're only 10, 10 years in chess, right? But in general, I mean, I have this impression. Uh, 
It's hard with chess ages post uh, Queen's Gambit, now that you mention it. You're not the first person that I've flubbed. But on average, when you're young in your chess, to a certain extent, everybody starts with E4 and we deal with peace play. We start with E4 and E5, we deal with peace play. This is natural. And then there's a natural ascension toward pawn play. So you're going to need to play more Queen's Gambits, more English openings, play for more pawn breaks, and you're going to literally have to put yourself into it. What I recommend, though, is that you play 64 games with every opening. So the Sicilian is more pawn play, which is why it's so popular against D4. White has to know how to time the pawn breaks. White has to know how to prepare to open lines. And so therefore, as you graduate, and that's why Philidor said pawns are the soul of chess, but he didn't really so much mean that the pawns themselves, it's the concept of using pawns is the soul of chess. Being able to include them as attackers Everybody credits stock, uh, Alpha Zero with the H pawn rush, but Bobby Fischer was doing it in the 70s and his King's Indian attacks and all of that for the most part. So yeah, handling your pawns is key. Against this particular opening, I would never put a knight on C3. Even though I almost want a knight to be able to go to E4, it's a little late now. You're wasting a little bit of time. Don't move the same things twice. You did get your pawn break in. Now again, at the beginning of the game, the center pawns are more valuable than the side pawns. And therefore, this one. For example, the remedy against uh, Nico has shut me down, by the way. Nico Demonius, in case you didn't know which Nico I was talking about, has shut me down because he likes to play B4. And one of my favorite recommendations against it is attacking it with the side pawn. Now, Nico's managed to shut it down in two ways. Um, he plays A4 early on, or he moves his E pawn so he can play B5. And it seems to work out well, because I don't want to take. But this pawn tension stays here for a long time. Let's just say for a moment, let's say, uh, after C6, what did Nico play today? I'm trying to remember what Nico played today. He played E3. And when I played a5, he played b5. And I think I took, which is a mistake. I shouldn't really take. I should keep applying pressure. And Nico, again, with the same line of thinking, prepares to bring a pawn toward the center and make that one a weakness. It's true that it's, it's best if uh, your opponent plays bishop to b2 on move 2. You're absolutely right that it's not the best. I think that uh, Anish Giri's recommendation of just developing pieces faster <coughs> than the opponent <coughs> is the simplest. The piece play variation. But I was using our example for uh, chess with Obi to represent uh, the pawns from the outside attacking inward. Going back to the Sicilian defense, the other great reason why the Sicilian defense is so good is because white must white must attack the center in order to gain an advantage and grab the space. Meanwhile, there's a stronger knight than the knight on f3. But black has also managed to get rid of... I can't get to, to that square. So now black has two center pawns and white only has one. So black has a majority of center pawns. Black actually has a little bit more material in return for white's improved knight and peace play and time. The Sicilian really is a gambit. Getting back to chess with Obi's game, so I can get on to this. Like, this was so strange of him, right? In this particular position, he should be breaking with c5. There's nothing that can come in to embarrass that square yet, so you might as well be playing C5. 97 is a waste of time. I like what you did. I also know that if you're gonna play against this, I still like the idea of that, and if the, we're still gonna get C4 in. Does Knight might wanna go to that square? 
So your opponent is 22.55. That's a good trade. Very strange opening by him. Finally, he gets his pawn break in. I like your space grabber. A little bit of caveman chess here. Was this really necessary? This is so sad for him. Looking good, sir. The overworked queen. Yes, the overworked queen. And it's game over, right? There is no answer to this. I guess we can play d6. Bishop d6. Now queen takes c6 check. Oh, I was expecting castle and queen side. Is there a reason not to castle queen side? You're getting something to d7 no matter what, right? Oh, that's the reason not to castle queen side. Nicely done. Absolutely. You said it right as I uh, looked over at chat. But obviously, getting back to Nico's last statement, the uh, trading of the E5 pawn for the V pawn, <clears throat> for the V4 pawn, is not necessarily what you want unless you're uh, exchanging time and space and material. Let's go back to the beginning of this game. <coughs> this was quite incredible. We're going to look at the opening book now. So b5, a4 surprisingly, Judith Polgar. Very nicely done. Judith Polgar and against Gata Kamsky, no less. Wow, he really showed her no respect in 1994. Can you believe that? No respect. That's insane. I'm going to put this in my 1D4 repertoire. I don't necessarily like this move, though. This move is not part of the repertoire. I'm going to recommend A4. A la peanut butter sandwiches. Basically, you're going to challenge those, and you're also bringing your rook up and across to whatever you, wherever you need it. If you need it, because his bishop's going to b7, he's not going to have any control over this square. If this bishop's there. So it seems a little ridiculous what he's done with his pawns. Oh, I realize what I usually do. I usually put it in our viewer game study. I haven't done this in a long time. But isn't this just game over? I would choose king to f1. I know, I've known Kamsky since he first came into this country. I was, I was in the room when he left the Soviet Union. He and I are relative friends. He's a very nice guy. I, there's not too many of the Grandmasters that I can say. I've known them since they literally got off the boat. At Grandmaster Alexander Ivanov, 1988, he shows up out of nowhere. Uh, I was living in Boston. He, he chose Boston to live. But you, could, uh, you can put this king here if you'd like, or you can move your king up there. Either way... You're winning this game in like three and a half moves. Exactly, Arquito. You're just winning that. You're just winning. The FFL, right? FF, a famous fucking legend. 
Believe it or not, I think you can use that as long as it's part of a title and it's not a curse word. Right? A like chess bitch. Chess bitch is the title of a book. So therefore. <laughs> you are so young. Ovi, you are so young. There's no risk. Your opponent has no pieces. There is no risk. Your opponent's pieces cannot do anything to you. You're literally capturing a pawn. So you're right. It is instructive in the fact that you believe there's risk and there is no risk. Yeah, but king e2, there's no checks. Let's just say that he plays rook to... Uh, Let's just say he plays rook to this square and we capture, right? And he tries to make some checks. Let's just assume that he even tries to make some checks. And then you bother the bishop and now he's losing a rook after this. He literally can't defend this rook and that bishop at the same time. He just... No matter what happens on the next move, you're capturing the bishop and you're capturing the rook. So you let him check you because you are attacking him first. <laughs> you need a sub, sir. That way you can watch all the instructional content. It's true. But in general, what Eric Keto said about just king e2 and bring the rook to b1 and you just win. I am low on coffee. Yeah, it's a good attitude to have. I just wish he had um, FFL hygiene. There, I said it. You know, my problem with many streamers, Mark Esserman, you know, I know he's coming in fresh off the tennis court, but I feel like if you're going to be on camera in front of viewers, you should at least be showered, even if you're not shaven. I mean, we're okay, guys. That was almost a clippable moment. <laughs> I'm sorry, but you can't show up without being a good role model. <laughs> okay. <laughs> you just got to do it. I guarantee you guys, at this point in the day, I am not unpleasant to be around, hygiene-wise. I might be unpleasant if I'm grumpy, but I'm hardly ever grumpy. I don't got it in me. I just don't have it in me. Oh, chess with Obi. We're not going to dominate it. We usually, uh, I don't necessarily say this out loud but normally normally I, I only go over games from within the tournament that we just played because that is the purpose of our diligent daily training in dojo chess with obi thank you so much nico for giving him the subscription yeah on average we play every day thank you nico you're 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 oh you're the boss i think you got your name up there for the uh for the month the leaderboard in the top left is the is the gifters for the month. Top gifters for the month. So yeah, we uh, we have our calendar of events. I've added seventy five names to the calendar for birthdays. I am going to be adding more. I don't necessarily want to change my stream title, as I found out that the YouTube No 
away he has. Yeah, he's got FFL on all of his streams in the title. I, it's very hard. Good morning, Lauren, again. Good evening, actually. As I know, it's like probably 10 o'clock at night for you. Give or take. I, yeah, no, I mean, I've gotten, amazingly enough, I was actually going to buy a wall clock. You know you, how you see in the movies where they've got the government headquarters, like the Pentagon or whatever, where they've got the, the clocks going across the wall so you know the time in all parts of the world? I couldn't find one that looked good with more than three clocks. I need five clocks minimum. I need five clocks minimum, and that way I'll know a relative value across. Well, I know Rogan is three hours ahead of you, so it's usually about one o'clock in the morning and for him, for some strange reason. He's several hours ahead of you. Oh, only two hours ahead of you. Cheap this guy is playing against an FFL. <laughs> it is a pretty good, funny thing, I have to admit. You definitely deserve that victory, T. But, Lauren, I really just want you to take things into perspective. And I know I've said this before, but I'm saying it for everybody else. The time control does not really matter because your opponents have it just as bad, no matter what the situation. And when you have, uh, it is the uh, dojo. If you look up the, uh, you can click on the tournament listings. Is there a schedule? I wonder, I used to have a schedule command, but I think it's mostly in the calendar of events. That we train every day at your time zone. So if you open up a calendar, it gives you your time zone. Don't usually happen to me. That is so cool, Arakito. I'm just going to put down FFL Kamsky to remind me to do it later. rather than spending all of our time hunting here on stream for the most part. But let's do a little bit of 44th Chess Olympiad purviewing. What happened to the official website and the standings? I'm going to go to the official website. How about that? Open standings. I'm a little jealous that I did not go. Jesse February, we're rooting for South Africa against... I'm trying to remember who she tweeted this morning that they're playing. This is the open section, though. Armenia and the United States. I am hoping that I'll eat my words as far as saying that the United States was not a favorite, being uh, two and a half paid mercenaries and one and a half... Is it two and a half? Or is it three? I'm not sure if I should count Wesley So as well. But Wesley So has been in the United States for a long time. Basically, Lanier de Benges and Levon Aronian just showed up and they're automatically on the Olympiad team, which I think is a little bit of a slight to the players that have been here for a long time. It's like if the Yankees bought nine new players and everybody who was a starter for all the previous years did not get to... Uh... <laughs> uh, yeah, but that was your one question, Lauren. You're out of questions now. <laughs> you already wasted your one question on can I ask a question? No, go ahead, Lauren.
No, no, but I'm not saying that it's bad. We can do that too. Of course I've considered it. I looked at the Trinidadian team. I'm ready to... I've got serious links with my wife being from Trinidad. Uh, apparently, the, my sister-in-law knows the president of the Trinidad Chess Association. And I would like to help the women's team because they're all rated so lowly. I will I will sponsor the coaching if they would take the uh, lessons on stream. Absolutely. That is a very interesting question, Lauren. Rather than teaching tactics in the usual way, it teaches how to maximize chances for tactical shots to appear in your game. There have been a variety of game books like that. I would suggest that you look for... <laughs> All right, well, the last part of your question kind of fell apart there. So basically, tactics come from good positions against inferior positions. When the opponent has poorly placed pieces, when the opponent has two weaknesses, then a tactic may appear. So in other words, you cannot have a tactic in isolation. No, no. I know where you're headed. It's okay. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, Kingslayer Sloan. I'm not entirely sure that that's the best way to do it. But there are countries out there where you can be playing as a 1600. We're just going to have to get everybody up. Eric Kino found the link. Oh, no. Uh, Eric Kino pointed out that Rogan found the link. All right. We're going to switch our content window. Uh, as much as I, I'm going to first bring this up. Pause the music. Oops, did I accidentally go the wrong way? One second with this. I'm pausing that and... I'm going to do it over here for screen one. Hold on, I didn't pause the music so we can hear it. Pause the music. Lástima que tenga que utilizar tu cochino para poder ganar. Well, okay, this is the draw, except uh, I don't have probably time for this. Oh, no. Ah, que fue. No alcanzó a aceptar un cadáver más. Bueno, a tiempo. Sorry. <sighs> Espero que se te por mi bien. Qué cochino, sí. Mm. Me da poco de vergüenza, pero es bicharachero de 3 minutos sin incremento, así que da lo mismo. Seriously. Ok. So he just fights me, yeah? Ok, so that's one thing I don't like about the... These games with no increment, because uh, people just can do the shit, to be honest. And uh, that's just shit. There is no other word for it. Okay, so that makes me lose respect for my opponent because if he wants to win like games like this, okay, feel free. You, you can have whole match if you want. I just don't want to be playing this match anymore. I don't want to play this. I'm sorry, I don't want to play this match anymore. You know, you can, you can, you can put the price, but I'm not playing this. Everybody can hear it, okay? Hello, Mr. Bell. Uh, hello. I'm not playing this. Uh, he just blacked me with Rook versus Rook uh, last game. I find it completely disrespectful. So I'm not playing this. Uh, you, you can tell him that he wins the match. Uh, congratulations and goodbye. Okay? I'm sorry. Really? 
I, I mean, uh, I find it uh, absolutely insulting and nonsense that uh, people like that, he's lower rated. I'm a famous fucking legend, you know, former candidate, and some, some prick is, uh, you know, he's flagging me with Rook versus Rook, no pawns. Uh, I find it absolutely disrespectful, so I'm not playing this. I'm sorry. Goodbye. Yes, indeed. I agree with the, I agree with him wholeheartedly. Ironically, I agree with him whole absolutely heartedly. What what happened there was just not cool. In general, I mean, I even run um, the FFL, right? Oh no. The volume was too low. Did everybody hear it okay, though? Yeah, it's, it's unfortunate if that volume was too low. The desktop audio, I have to turn up. Cool, All right, one more time, and I will crank up the volume a little bit. I'm always worried because I've got it in my ear, right? And we'll do it full screen. And we'll do the whole thing because I will to crank up the desktop volume a little bit. He was talking in Spanish, so I wasn't entirely sure how relevant vale. it was at first. Que tenga que utilizar trucos cochinos para poder ganar. He's uh, talking it's low. The draw, except uh, I don't have probably time for this. Oh, no. Ah, que fue. No alcanzó a aceptar mi tablet. Ah, no tiene. Sorry. Espero que se te por mi bien. Qué cochino, sí. Me da un poco de vergüenza, pero he dicho la cheta tres minutos sin incremento, así que da lo mismo. Seriously. Okay. So he just flagged me, yeah? Huh? Okay, so that's one thing I don't like about the Blizz games with no increment because. Uh, no increment just sucks. Don't do the shit. To be honest. It's not chess. And uh, that's just shit. There's no other word for it. Okay, so that makes me lose respect for my opponent because if he wants to win like games like this, okay, feel free. You, you can have whole match if you want. I just don't want to be playing this match anymore. I don't want to play this. Anymore. I'm sorry, I don't want to play this match anymore. You know, you can, you can, you can put the prize, but I'm not playing this. Hello. Cristobal? Uh, hello? I'm not playing this. Uh, he just flagged me with Rook versus Rook uh, last game. I find it completely disrespectful. So I'm not playing this. Uh, you, you can tell him that he wins the match. Uh, congratulations and goodbye. Okay? I'm sorry. Really? I, I mean, uh, I find it uh, absolutely insulting and nonsense that uh, people like that. He's lower rated. I'm a famous fucking legend. You know, former candidate and some some prick is, uh, you know, he's flagging me with rook versus rook, no pawns. Uh, I find it absolutely disrespectful, so I'm not playing this. I'm sorry. Goodbye. Yeah, welcome to chess at my age, actually, as well. You know, I used to be a good player. I don't know what to tell you, but on average, it's really sad that it happens. But you know, c'est la vie, right? It happens. Make sure I close the right ones. Yeah, he played a match for the World Chess Championship. I know it's the terms of the match. They're basically playing 3-0. It is the terms of the match. You know you're going to get flagged. Uh, but everything that he said was true. He shouldn't. He just shouldn't be playing the match. <clears throat> on average flagging does happen as a strategy it is part of the match conditions um but i agree with what he said get used to it no just choose not to play just how are you going to demand better conditions if you don't vote with your feet just don't play no increment matches and i'm very thankful that lauren plays with the two seconds i don't expect her to play with the two seconds but I know that she will become a better chess player 
no matter what chess she plays, provided that it's, and I consider 3-2, a very reasonable of a fast time control. It's like all you've got. But the good news is, and it's the statement I said before, with Lauren, your opponent has the same time control. And on average, you're just going to have to think faster. Uh-oh. This earpiece is fading. I'm going to switch earpieces. Doesn't really matter which one they go in. Hopefully I can hear the music. Should we should we re-engage the music? Everything's good now. Yeah. Interestingly enough. Um this was my response to your response. So getting back to the test uh, the Oh, I need to turn down the volume a little bit. The volume is way too loud for the music, for me, in my ear anyway. So, what I really want to say is that good tactics come from good positions. So, if you would like to study highly tactical players, that would be Shirov, Tall, Kasparov, um... Alakine. You're off tall at Alakine. Alakine is probably the first person that you would want to study for generating good tactics and placing your pieces so that tactics may appear. Yes. But ironically, yeah, even in the even in the Grunfeld, right? Uh the tactics don't appear in isolation. They have to be Eatenheimers. Good to see you, man. Yeah, tactics do not appear in isolation. I want to see the women's standings. India. Tanya Sachdev, beast mode, right? Let me see where Tanya Sachdev, she is a hell of a board for. Like, let's say Co uh, Humpy is like uh, plus two going into today's game. I did not know about Miss Roy Shally. I think we had her birthday not long ago. But plus four and plus four for boards. The alternate is three and oh as well. Wow. What an Indian team. Kyrgyzstan. I'm very much a fan of Tanya Satsdev, especially after the Perpetual Chess podcast, uh, Jacob Agard thing, where he told her to grow a pair. And it was a successful uh, equivalent for uh, Agard's tutelage there. See, where are you going to find all of these games like this, right? India, 4-0. India, 3.5. India, 3-1. And then they drew a match as uh, Yeetenheimers, as Jeff pointed out. Jeff, our man in Toronto. That would be an interesting match to see if they could have actually uh, pipped the post on that one. Then they're back in the driver's seat here with two and a half, one and a half, and then they lost two. They drew again. But India two, let's see if we can track their progress. Today, India one is playing India three. Let's go with chess 24 for a moment. A. Eh? Chess 24 has the best coverage, to be honest.
go to watch. And of course we could go over to their coverage. So at a glance, this gives you the fastest recall on being able to find a game and look at it, right? Like Wesley So in this particular game, just dominating his opponent. And a two knights variation. Instant bishop pair. Now black places his pawns on the color of his opponent's extra bishop. I've always wanted to find a way to put my pawn on another square other than d4, other than d3. Whoops. This is the streamer Rant Malcumian, by the way. Is it? it? Doesn't look like him. Is that the streamer? Oh, their moves have been made. I just want to get to the starting position. What's up with this, right? Rook takes. Queen takes f7 check. So if pawn takes, queen takes f7 check and bishop c4, leading to a very, very tricky mate, right? Nicely done. What a beautiful attack. What a beautiful attack. And we get to checkmate with the ever prosaic bishop to d5. Nicely done. That was really a brutal moment for uh, Rand. That was a he. He was really broken there. Yeah, he's a broken and battered, battered boy. Let's go back down. Dominguez drawing with black, Shankland. Oh, I love the way they switch the, the colors. Even though you can't tell what color Wesley saw with it, it's because it's all white. Right? So if the remaining boards draw, the United States moves forward. Is Gupta the kid with the with the great record? I'm trying to recall. No, not Gupta. Who is it? Who's the Indian 16-year-old uh, with the really amazing record? Iranian has a crushing position. Oh yeah, you can't tell what color he is either. Let's see the whole game. I mean, don't you, this is just a pleasant to look at interface. And if you don't like this particular board, you can change it to blue, uh, which I often do. I usually have a blue board to emphasize the dark night. Animation speed, auto, enable board coordinates. Ah, yuck. Confirm moves, switch on football. I don't know what that means. What was it on before? Fusion? Yeah, this is a nice report to look at on average. Yeah, this is just a terrible structure for white to have this bishop stuck in here. Absolutely horrid. 
like if you're gonna this is one of the reasons why i don't recommend this system as white the d3 system you might as well be playing the italian game i really think that you're giving your opponent a clean shot at you and you should never put your bishop on g5 unless you really have the intention of taking the knight on f6 Put the uh, notation up, because that's distracting. So far, so good. It's just a pleasant position for black. Uh-oh. So c5 was not so great. King to g7 was better. You can always play through the variations down here by clicking on the link as well. And that puts the whole thing in. Or we can go back to the game continuation. So now, black has resumed being better. What happened here? Oh yeah, no, we were we we missed out on uh, c5 being a little bit speculative, and white just. Tries not to fix the pawn structure. Part of the plan is knight up one. Knight h2, knight g4. Right? Like right here. Knight f1. Ultimately, he plays uh, knight f5. Knight f1, knight e3. Yeah, this is ugly. The bishop is hanging. So he guards it this way. Three pieces attacking. And everything coming through. Wow. Is I mean, I was actually thinking... First, I thought about queen takes d5, but that just loses. Does it lose? And if it does lose, how does it lose? This bishop takes f5, and knight takes f3. Discovered check. Rook's hanging. Yeah, notice how he just keeps building his position, Lauren, and the tactics stem from really good positions. The grind is real. In general, you don't play on the king side until after... I mean, I don't think he needed any additional fixing of the king side. That's a good question. It's hard to explain the computer evaluation moves. I just think that this was a less useful move than it needed to be. It's about efficiency and movement. So literally, the position's just the chances for both sides here. Then he plays c5 and white has an opportunity to carry on with his plan or to take advantage of it. We can put that line in the notes and that way we can see it. is not catching up here. Yuck. Yeah, I mean... Look at this pawn structure for white. This is absolutely hideous. Insane. How hideous this is. If I'm going to do my 24-hour tall stream...
that crazy or what? I wonder if I have a lesson today at six. You know what? I haven't actually checked on that. Did I miss my lesson on Monday? I'm completely out to lunch during the summer. My 7.31 was Sunday. All right. Got to make the bacon. Yeah, Naranian just destroying him. Oh no, that setting is still on. Did you see that? Look at the notation on the board. Isn't that horrible? Where's that setting? Yeah, make sure that setting is turned off. Enable board coordinates. I may need to start it. Switch on the local engine. I love the football, the AstroTurf board. Yuck. The Astro, for those football fans and soccer fans, I think of soccer as football, by the way. I also played American football, but I think American football just has to be called American football because it's not played anywhere else in the world. Soccer is global. Therefore, soccer is the real football. And it's played with feet only. No sleep, nothing could go wrong. <laughs> Thank you, Arquito. Yeah, you're absolutely right. Arquito, I didn't... That's a tall order indeed. Well, I mean, I've already missed two hours, basically. I've been on for uh, just over two hours already. So I might as well, what's 22 hours between friends? Uh, there are a few things on, on uh, this that I like for the most part. Oh, no, I need to change this board. Hold on. My friends? I don't know, Zeelonson. I don't have that many friends on here. Real name, Wonder Woman. Well, this is not Lauren. All right, Wonder Woman. Why not? Yeah, that board is hard on the eyes, right? Let's go back to our uh, women's chess Olympiad. I want to see how my my favorite Mongolian team is doing, if you don't mind, if you can humor me. Let's, let's turn that board around. That was the really old board. Before I was a premier member, I think the choices were this board or the other board. I kind of like this one. This one looks like the uh, the felt on the pool table. They reclothed the tables last night, Eric Keto, so I was playing on brand new cloth. Did I play the small women's world championship last night? No, I didn't. I didn't. Uh, I didn't. The small women's world champion. Ju and John, I did not play her. I don't know if I ever came through. It's too bad. No, I, uh, I had to take my daughter. When I last left all of you, I had to take my daughter to work. I drove her to work. 
and nothing came of the uh, banter blitz chess 24 stream it's true i was trying to figure out why i was still on the screen one content mode at the time that happened Juen Jun, I consider her a friend. She actually friended me on Facebook after the 2016 meetup for the most part, so it was all good. Even though I think in her country there's not that much freedom of movement. Peter's Fiddler and Peter Lecco. So, uh, Nico, yeah, Peter Spindler was talking about how difficult it is to get paid legitimately while working. And and uh, he was talking about a few other things in the Chess 64 podcast about when people gather around the kitchen table and talk politics. The one fellow gathers the cell phones and puts them into the kitchen next to the tap and turns on the running water just in case anyone is bugged. <laughs> And Peter Spindler says, you know, I'm pretty young and naive, but I don't think about these things. But really, I should be more aware that they could happen. She is. I've actually learned a few things from her games. I'm very, I'm very happy with her. So, yeah, the Trinidad women's team that I wanted to, uh, let's just do the, let's just do this the easy way. Can I do that? Can I do control F? Trinity. So here's the Trinidad women's team. 1100, 1300, 1600, 1500. I don't even know what, they're white on these two boards, I assume. They're winning against the 1100 and then 1200. But some of their games were just so... <laughs> Turn on the water, yes, exactly. Right? Isn't that crazy, Nico? It's very sad when Peter has to mention it in his stream and his uh, interview. And then, of course, the other question comes along about, do you think there'll be any repercussions for you even giving this interview? And he like he says, I would like to live in a world where I think that the chance of that happening is zero, except that I know that it's not zero. <laughs> there will, there will be positive. There's always a chance for repercussions for me just giving this interview and talking about the government on a on a podcast. Go grab a donut. You've worked hard listening to us. You deserve it. <laughs> you don't have these problems in Australia and New Zealand. But yeah, let's uh, give it... Um, I'm going to head up to Mongolia here. Mongolia is on board number 20 or so. I believe. North Macedonia. As opposed to South Macedonia, Macedonia is a small enough country that they have their own federation for half of the country. What? The women don't get along? They're very catty? I don't understand. What could this be? I, you're right, I don't know the Australian government very well. I'm going to have to do some Netflix uh, mini-series on uh, Australian politics. There's a new season of Borgen out. Oh, it's the official name of the... Of the thank you, Nico. I appreciate it. We have North California. Well, my reference, Nico, is that we have the state of California. And the state of California is so large, they do not get along with the other half of the state. So they send representatives to national competitions from Northern California and Southern California actually sends representatives. So therefore the organizers don't talk to each other or don't cooperate with each other in any way. So the, the Bay Area where the Chess Bay is living, Berkeley, San Francisco, Oakland, all those in the North 
versus Southern California. Now, Eric Keto, I'm not sure which end of the spectrum Sacramento is on. Because uh, Sacramento is actually very central and probably the easternmost large city in California. It's not on the West Coast. It's in the. It's almost mid Midwest. Just survey the hell out of us. <laughs> But thank you, Nico, for that update. When I see North, like North Dakota and South Dakota, I think two different places. It's very unusual. Like I would expect New Macedonia, but North Macedonia. Meanwhile, the U.S. team and Tatev Alvaral and bringing home the point on board four as they're all playing relatively even games. For the government to force programmers to make backdoors into any programs. It's the law in Australia. I just can't get over this. It's illegal for the programmer to tell anyone, and if it's leaked to the media, any media source speaking about it is charged with espionage. That's so bizarre. Hold on one second as I have my whisper. Rogan, are you talking about the World Open IRL streams? I'm just going to answer the uh, Rogan is. That's some China stuff there. Yeah, I know, right? I'm reading the. Uh, I'm reading your whisper. Uh, basically. I'm going to give Kingslayer Sloan credit as my YouTube editor. He asked me a question about, he whispered me about a request, and I'm not sure which videos, or all of the videos, I guess. No, I do believe in the Commonwealth countries, by the way. They have a law about need to know. And the United States, we have a right to know. So in the Commonwealth countries, uh, information that is shared is on a need to know basis. And the way I understand it, I've always respected that as far as a certain need to know basis, but it creates loopholes like this. Uh, and in the United States, right, it's not super bad the draft stuff, yeah. The draft stuff has no audio, right? I, what I was thinking about doing uh, Kingslayer Sloan is that I have a whole bunch of uh, video from the World Open that has no audio. And I was thinking about putting it to music, cutting it up and slicing it up and just showing bits and pieces as far, to, as, far as a montage, as an intro to the stream. What do you think about that idea? So basically, you'll have me walking in, we'll see Ben Feingold, we'll have the music, and we'll change the music based on, we'll edit the music and the, and the video together. It's mostly used for targeted ad content, yeah. That's unfortunate. That is rather crazy. Absolutely and utterly and completely crazy. Insane, I tell you. What? Quite crazy.
All right. If I were to do a 24 hour stream, I'm going to have to schedule it. I don't even know if I can upload a video that long in YouTube. I don't know if I can stream for that long on YouTube. YouTube might cut me off. And then, of course, it'll be a pain in the butt for Rogan to even edit. I need Nemo's permission to publish my IRL games. Oh, that happens all the time, though. I haven't seen Chesco Tondras on. I believe he's working on it. If I had to guess, I believe that he's feverishly working on a chessable course. But he has shown up in our stream, and he has shown up in other streams. AKA Nemsco. It's time for a Nemo ad. AKA Nemsco. Perhaps, to me, if you're going to find a female version of Daniel Negrano who could appeal to a wide audience without being, let's say, either too young or too old, let's just say, like, Alexander Kosteniak does not appeal to all audiences, right? And Alexandra Botez and Andrea Botez appeal to a much younger audience. Uh, and they also don't necessarily do chess as a primary source. And I and I believe that of all the streamers that could be an ambassador for chess from a female perspective, uh, school term is in Australia, so he could be teaching, yeah. Absolutely. So meanwhile, yeah, we're, oh, I'm sorry, I was headed for Mongolia before we called it a day. Vietnam, I met the Vietnam team. They were all in the World Open. I don't know if they were all in the World Open. But I was happy to uh, catch a video of some of them. And talk to a couple of them. It was quite lovely. And I am now GM Min Lee was there with them as a coach, I believe. Possible he might be Vietnamese. I'm not I've not actually looked into GM Min Lee. So basically part of my project today aside from getting some trustable material out for students of all ages. <laughs> Let's take a look. Let's find out if he's on the men's team. Oh, over here. That's the fastest way to find it. I always used to go back to watch. And then I'd have to bring it down that way. The Wesley So is definitely bringing home the point, but Sam Shanklin is about to give it away. So where were we? Vietnam. Did I spell it wrong? Or am I not in the right frame? I have to be in the right frame. Let's just click on this frame. What? Does Vietnam not have a men's team? I. 
E. T. There's no Viet. So there's no Vietnam men's team, apparently. Yeah, he changed his name to GM now. GM Minley. <laughs> Unless he's pulling an Ollie Reza. Now, I don't believe Vietnam has a men's team. They put all their money into the women's team, which is pretty darn strong. Isn't that crazy? All the men left the country and they're streaming in the United States. The Rogan. Cayman Islands, not unlike where you live now, only, you know, possibly a little bit nicer. You can edge out Malcolm Powell. Oh, no, this is the women. I thought, or is it the women? This isn't the women. This is the men. Shoot. Rissy Yip has the day off, I, from what I vaguely remember seeing. I am a Yippie. I'm a big Carissa Yip fan. I will defend her. She's trying her best. She's still in. She's still in school. So where was that? Cayman Islands. But we need a country that's closer to you. You don't have to actually commute that far. But a lot of these islands provide their own funding. The, 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 the Federation doesn't provide their own fun, funding, unfortunately. So the games are his under... I disagree. I disagree, uh, Rogan. Uh, chess games are not copyrightable. Because all of the moves are there, the only way that you can copyright a game is if you change the game in some way so that it is not represented by the generic uh, gestalt of chess having been in the public domain for 2,000 years. There is a small, there is a small uh, copyright claim for organizers and they have attempted to dominate it. Oh, what happened there? I am Munoz just blundered, right? That arrow just went straight across. Is this the game? I thought I clicked on it. I thought I just clicked on it. But maybe I didn't bring it up. I am Munoz. Yeah, that, that was the game. So here. Did it battle back to being equal and then he just threw it away again? I saw the white, the, the black bar just fly. Oh, there it is. So he's doing quite okay until he takes this knight. Now there's a pass pot in the seventh rank. Ouch. That was a pretty big swing while we were watching. Yeah. No, the chess games are in the public domain. So basically I could publish a book of Magnus' games. Provided that the thoughts and ideas behind my interpretation of the moves are my own. I cannot take Magnus' comments and Magnus' ideas and then publish them as my own. I would have to give him credit to a certain extent. My game with Nemo is not copyrightable, the game itself. The video footage could be copyrightable. It's too bad that I didn't video the game for myself. I'm still hoping that 
and I will talk to the YouTube guy if it's possible that I can get it. Judah lost against the 2461. He's quite exhausted from the candidates tournament. Honestly. Let's see that debacle. Maksudlu. Oh, Australia is struggling against Iran. The thing I really think is uh, is very sad is that Ali Reza didn't play. Mark Paragua, good job, Mark. I Mark Paragua lives in Manhattan. Very proud of him. No, Mark Paragua is not a twenty four sixty one. He has been in beast mode for the entire year. He's been tearing up tournaments hand over fist. That is an old rating. I don't know where that rating is coming from. But I believe if we looked up his live rating, it has to be higher. Let's go back up to that comment. Maybe that comment was deleted. I don't know. Well, they, they commented about the 2461. I just sort of wanted to reply to that one. I'll comment. He lives in Manhattan. That rating is very inaccurate. So meanwhile, Bobby's H5 is demanding some attention. Let's head up. So the position is just equal, but Fabiano has been trying to add some life to his game. Ouch! This might not be good. You cannot inflict your own will upon the position. This is the drawback here. Yeah, knight h4, knight g6, threatening a relative catastrophe on the open file. Oh, I didn't realize I was missing a couple of chats. You're hoping that I make him more on the ads? I don't know that I make more on ads. I did mention um, the stream revenue for the previous month. It is not paid unless it exceeds a certain amount on the 11th of the month. And it was not that much. I'm not sure why it wasn't that great, unless it reset itself. Yeah, 
Yeah, no, Mark is a good guy. He and Oliver Barbosa. Oliver Barbosa has a lovely uh, family and a daughter, I think, who plays chess as well. I usually see them at tournaments. I'm very proud of Mark. That is an amazing win. I really can't wait to tweet about that one on average. I am very impressed. I'm very happy to say when I saw that comment about Duda losing, that is to Mark Caragua of the Philippines, Darwin Lalo. Darwin Lalo is also no slouch, although he's no match for uh, GM Bartel. He was coaching one of my students when she would go to the Philippines, usually in the summertime. He and I are somehow we ended up becoming friends somehow because uh, we connected through uh, my student. GM Barcelia, Barcenia. I had a run in with him when he was trying to get his Grandmaster Norm. He's never been a very strong Grandmaster, but he played in my tournaments uh, at one moment. I believe it was him. Because uh, that name, that complete name matches up. He got into trouble with us as the organizers over, uh, you know, Rearranging draws in his norm tournament. So unfortunately, what's going on here? I don't know who's what color. So I'm assuming that they're white on boards too, which means this is a catastrophe. Ivan Saric is a much stronger player than Butsurin, so that's no, no, no joke. But they're getting the point back on fourth board, hopefully. What's going on here? I can't tell. So, but Surin is winning? Because that's the only one. They must be white and white. So, these two are switching. But this one can't be white. Let's just look at this one. We got to find out what color these guys are. The Mongolia really is white on this particular board. Threatening mate, not a big deal. I think black can defend it. Greece is going to win against Ukraine. That's good news, too. It's so exciting here. The, the, the chat kit is readable and respectful. On late chess, it's not always respectful. So, this fellow is black. This fellow is definitely white. This means Patsurin is losing on board one. And Gudava is winning on board two. This really is white. So, they're going to lose three to one, unfortunately. This is the game that should decide it, and it doesn't look good. Unless there's a miracle. So why don't I see... One second, I wanted to test this playlist. This is a public playlist already, so I should be able to see it. I do want to switch up the music. Oh, I see. It's on Spotify. That's the problem. All right. Fair enough. Spotify it is, then. 
see if Spotify shows up. There we go. I wanted to test this uh, this one at the end of this video anyway, as we're going to bring this to a close, if we can. We have... Oh, the Chess Bay's 24-hour birthday stream. Of course it is. I didn't do Chess Bay's birthday today on purpose, although she is in... She is in our calendar, by the way. Three deep, how are you, sir? A GM is a GM. Did you read that somewhere? He's never been a strong grandmaster. <laughs> it does, right? It's so bizarre that anybody would be saying something like that in reality. So yeah, I'm going to sample this new playlist at the end of this, just to see what's going on. And I'm also going to do another sampling of this playlist when I do some crazy gambit randomness streaming as well. So how are the Mongolian women doing? That's the last one I wanted to check on. The Mongolian men are roughing it. I don't remember how the Mongolian women were doing. Bobby is going from bad to worse indeed. Yeah, he's trying to he's trying he's trying to liven up his chess. He needs to study with someone who can liven up his chess. I would love to give Fabi a chance. I should find out when he's in New York. And see if I can get him. Join his team as a creative thinker. Mongolia should be right around here among the women because they were doing well. <coughs> oh, they're on board nine. I know they're in the top 20, so that makes sense. Yes, Ank Tool. And this is the girl who drew Arena Crush. Uh, Anu Bayar student. Anu Bayar, by the way, is the collaborator that I'm working on hardest because she's an absolute sweetheart. And I would like to get her as a streamer and share the possible income with her because she's not streamed before. Let's see what we can do. They're beating Cuba? Or are they? Are they getting a the point back here? But they're winning that one. They just need to draw this one. This is the key match. Will this game stay equal? I am... Wonder if I can attach
Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna get that Mark Brago one. In. Ah. Let's see how this game transpired here. D4, C4, classical. I I approve. Uh, I'm not a big fan of uh, Bishop E3, but okay. Bishop G4, by the way, is not a King's Indian move. That is never really a King's Indian move. Grandmaster Mike Rode plays it. It's one of the reasons why he's never been a super GM. But GMs for GMs, as we talked about. Wesley So, yeah, he, he obliterated his opponent. How many names on the calendar for August 6th? Is that your birthday, sir? I haven't asked you your birthday now that I think about it. I can show people my calendar, but I'm a little worried about where it's going to pop up. Let me just dim the lights for a moment as I bring up the calendar and how it looks and how it looks to me. Yeah, that's what I thought. It brought it up right here in front of me. And that can go by the wayside. So basically, I have an incredible file of the names for the month of August. Uh, where is my Google Calendar? Yeah, this is the Google Calendar. Let's let's re we can bring the bring it back. Our Google Calendar for the most part. Of course, I'm getting uh, doxxed over there. There we go. I didn't I didn't completely vet the calendar. So meanwhile, yeah, August sixth. Let's just go back. Yana Jakova. Wow, how come I didn't do her? Joking, joking. Joking. Did I do Victoria Samilt Nelson? I don't even know who I did tomorrow. I think I did Victoria Samilt Nelson because she's Peter Heide Nelson's uh, wife. There's no doubt that I, I did not do that one Belov. i usually stay away from guys that end in parentheses just because it doesn't format very well i have not yet opened a p post office box yet i'm glad you reminded me of that i did look into that there are two types of post office boxes that i can uh do one for the UPS store, which is almost the same, but it provides a business address. And another one which, uh, and basically I can have my address anywhere with that, and they'll still deliver it to down the street. And the US post office box, which is a little bit more primitive, but far less expensive. So yeah, let's put that on today's agenda because I do have to go to the UPS store to return stuff from Amazon. So Rogan's uh, comment about there are five names on the calendar for the sixth. And for today, we had only three names. We chose this young lady because I've never done her before. And of course, it's the chest Bay's birthday as well. So she's doing her stuff for a 24-hour birthday stream, which we will probably exit stage left to see in just a moment. Milton Hanauer is a player that I did in the past because he was the only birthday I had on this day. I distinctly remember that in the first year, all I had was Milton Hanauer. Wang Hao was on the fourth. The only reason I did not do him was because his name ends in parentheses. His address ends in parentheses, and it's very awkward. I can't remember. Oh, and I also try to choose players who have photos. So Nelly was the player who had a photo and 
in celebration of promoting more women in chess as well. So meanwhile, that's the upshot on the calendar. If you is not really the person rating wise. No, but she's influential as a streamer and so are you, Rogan. Uh, we're gonna do our best, right? For those of you who don't have the calendar, you may be able to add it. You may be able to subscribe to it or add it to your calendar, whether it's an iCal or a Google calendar there. Just a heads up. Oh, there was one more thing I could have done before I do it. I'm gonna, I have to dim the lights to bring it up. <clears throat> Here's what I can do. Just to show you how many entries are in the calendar. Let's go back to it for just one moment. I am going to go to my bookmarks. Let's uh, close that window again. Oh, I can't do it that way. All right, now I'll show the window again. So basically, I, I have everything in a bookmark folder. Not that one, silly. Basically, in the bookmarks folder, I want to go to my bookmark manager, not this one. Bookmarks, bookmark manager, and then if I go to leading players, right here. Actually, I should go to leading players over here. This is the folder in which all of the bookmarks for all of the players are located. So if I go over here, and basically I'm scouring the Australian Championship and everything, so some of those are there. In the month of August, for example, I can right-click and open all 178 birthdays in the month of August. 190 in July. We could add them all up. 187 in June. 218 in May. 214. 225, 213 birthdays, 236 birthdays, and I wasn't even doing September yet, right? I stopped with uh, with this one. So in September, we have 188. October is 171. 215 in November, and 159 in December. And as you can see, I have a folder of to be dones that don't have. Oh no, I haven't done those. Unknowns. 175 unknown birthdays. Basically, these are pages of players whose birthdays I have not yet ascertained. That's pretty amazing, Eatenheimers. Wang Hao. But now I have a plethora, and I do try to rotate them out. Every year I do want to do, unless I know someone personally. You know, if you were a Grandmaster and yours came around, like Grandmaster Nick DeFermian on July 26th, I tend to do. I would love to do Peter's Fiddler, but he shares a birthday with Tigran Petrosian, so it's hard to pass on a world champion. I would have to do a second arena or Swiss in order to... So here, for example, the Australian Chess Championship. Let's just bring this up. These are the Australian Girls Champions. Basically, you can tell that I've been to many of the links because they are green. Bobby Chang is playing in the Olympia. Anton Smirnov is playing in the Olympia. Justin Chan is playing in the Olympia. So anyone in this thing that I've not yet seen, I have to check their Wikipedia page to see if they're notable. And all of these are worthy to a certain extent. All right, going back down to uh, Levick does not have a... But Purdy, we have him in the calendar. Everything that is green is already in the calendar. I have to be very careful about this particular thing. 
Because let's say I go to page does not exist. The Ron Klinger is an Australian. He's a grandmaster. And he's born on the 8th of November. So here we go. We're off. We're going to put this one in. Leading players. And I will put him in November. And basically, we're going to put him at 11 slash 08. We're going to add Ron Klinger. Even though he's not as uh, notable, he is an Australian champion. And everyone should recognize him as such. His Wikipedia page isn't that great. Right? Australian women's chess champion. You can see that I haven't done a lot of these yet. Do I not really have her? So when I open this, you'll see that there's no star up here, which basically means that I don't have her yet. And she shares a birthday with women's world champion Susan Polgar. So we will add her to the leading players of April. And when April rolls around, I will add them to the calendar. Right now, I can't do it. So ultimately, if you have a notable chess player, you should be able to find them. If I go forward, bookmark should be there, and it should show the right information. North Sydney. Australian chess grandmaster. We don't have him. Third highest, third ranked active player in Australia. And we do have him already. He's already in on the 6th of June. 626. I hazard to guess that he's the day after Kremnik. I think Kremnik... No, Kramnik. Yeah, I think Kramnik is June 25th. I'm going to find out in a moment. So if we go over here, we click on June 26th, Master Chess Dojo birthdays, we'll see that he's been added. That is our guy. The guy that we just looked at. Now let's see if I'm right about that's just but dojo birthdays. Bramnick is June 25th. Am I that good or what? Bramnick is June 25th. On average, yes. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how my calendar is built to a certain extent. And I'm going to have to give Yana some credit here one of these days. She's born tomorrow, huh? Let's see what we have for a birthday tomorrow. Let's see. Stockfish versus chess base round one. I don't want to lose that bookmark. Look, Quang Liam. Let's check our... Master Chess Dojo Rapid and Classical for tomorrow. Yeah, we have some Victoria Samilt Nelson. It is Mayor Pan's birthday on Sunday, for those of you. Had a tea and a muffin. Nice. Eatenheimer, though. That is crazy. That your first event, I can't believe it was Wang Hao. Was it a year ago? I don't, I can't. So if I want to search the bookmarks, Wang Hao. 
and his birthday is August 4th. For some reason, I also have a FIDE ratings page for him bookmarked somewhere. Not sure why. But he's uh, quit chess more than once. That was your anniversary, man. Absolutely. Let me just show you what the awkwardness is in the uh, in the setting up of the of the arena. For example, uh, we have HTML markup language. So here there's parentheses, and if I put another parentheses in here, then it doesn't register as a parentheses. So if I were to go to Wang Hao, let's, uh, where's Wang Hao? There he is. So I'm gonna take his address, Control C. I'm gonna put it in to the Lee Chess uh, HTML markup. Right here. I can always return Victoria Sinelt Nelson, by the way. I'm going to put it in here. You'll see there are two parentheses in a row. So when I save this, it does something funny on the other end. So now you can see that we haven't been to that link yet through here. But there's a random parentheses at the end. And now it goes to a very strange page because the parentheses has been taken off. So I've noticed that since you don't know when you first stopped, <laughs> like our anniversary, huh? That's crazy. I would look to our very first tournament. Basically, games with Rogan, Joe Sloan. Let me go to the uh, birthday calendar again. August. And we'll go to August 6th. Right here. Basically all of them are in a row. And anyone who I've just added will be at the end. So when I go to the end, then there'll be someone below 831 that shouldn't be 831. And I can just add them from the end of each each bookmark file. Let me return Victoria Simelt Nelson's address. She also has a very active Twitter page, so I'm hoping to include her. So you can see what my problem is now. When I have players with parentheses in their Wikipedia names, it doesn't come out very well. And also, when I try to put the link into uh, a Twitter page or something like that, notice all the gobbling gut for the unusual characters in her name, which is also very awkward. I love the forbidden pairings because if there are two brothers in a tournament, I can prevent them. So now if we click on Victoria Smelt Nelson, it brings up the right page. And she is the wife of Peter Heine Nelson. She is a politician, a Lithuanian politician. And she still plays chess. So what were we going to do here? We were going to go to, um, we were looking up on Lee Chess. Oh, this has uh, an edited screen here. I'm going back in time. I'm going to look up Rogan Joe Sloan or Kingslayer Sloan. Actually, we'll just go to my games today, right? He played in the tournament. Let's 
And we'll go to this oak, this one. So Rogan played in the tournament today. He didn't play in the tournament today. Never mind. I thought it was going to be easier than that. So the first time I ever played Lauren. I'll go to her profile. And 21 games with me. So chances are the very first time Lauren ever played. was six months ago, Elizabeth Pot Swiss. So approximately six months ago is where we start looking for Lauren. How are you, Ron? Good to see you, man. Are you looking for followage? I think it's called followage. <laughs> oh, time. Here we go. Followage. Thank you, Nico. Uh, Kingslayer Sloan. I know, right? One year, six months, nine days, and 12 hours. Follow it. You just have to type follow it for years, I think. Uh, Yeetenheimers. One year, two months, and eight days. So it's possible that Yeetenheimers played me in a simul, perhaps, two months before the uh, Wang Hao event. Um, that's a good question. I don't know. I do not know. Two and a half points. Hard games today. Hold on. What are we? What are we following here? I missed part of Pegasus's. Uh... I did not play the Lee Chess Summer Marathon. So basically, Shri Deep. Yeah, that's true. It does. If I don't follow for a period of time, it would take that out of out of uh, contention. You guys only have 3,600 games? 116 games. Wow, this is going to take some time to get to the bottom of. Eleven months ago, one year ago. In the 1600s. This was a rapid casual, right? 15 plus five. So most people played me in a simul first. I should look up Yeetenheimers. I can invert the sorting. Oh, I've learned something here. Hold the phone. I have to do it at the top, right? Can I invert the sorting? By clicking on it again. 
Oh, advanced search. Yes, that is true. Not that, not that advanced search. I go to my games. Profile games. I am approaching 12,000 games. Can I play 497 games today? Would that be in my best interest? No. The bad search. This nation owes you a huge debt. Opponent. Kingslayer Sons. How are you, Suor? Suro. Suro. And sort by date descending and ascending. There we go. I don't have any funny business in here, right? Doesn't say rating or anything like that. So one year ago? I thought it was much longer ago than that. Unless it doesn't sort. It's all one year ago. But it doesn't give me an exact date. So let's go up. If this is, in theory, the very first one, Kingslayer Sloan drew with me in a simul. And he is being kind to me. I started streaming approximately in April of 2020. I didn't actually really, really start streaming. I can see the exact date and time, top left. Yeah, it doesn't show it up here. Unless I click in the in the tournament, right? One year ago. This is the simul that I played. Is that weird? Oh, and wait for five seconds. There it is. February 21st. It doesn't show it on screen because it's... Uh, oh, it does show it on screen. Good, because I'm showing the whole screen. February 21st, 2021. 2-21-2021, 2021, in theory. Go back in time and check to see if that's true. And this one was 228-2021. So the very first game we've ever played, Broken, in a simul. You found me in a simul just like many others have. I should do more simuls every day that I get a chance. Oh. Write something in chat. Two slash twenty one slash twenty twenty one. Chest vision. Yeah, I may have to turn it off for a moment in order to get the sign in. Your first game wasn't actually an asylum. Just Vision AI. 
I tell you, I've done so many different, get the most out of over 32, 30,000 YouTube chess videos, video search. Opening name. How about the England Gambit? Everyone falls for this new opening trap. D4, E5, D takes E5. And now in this position, I mean, the main move by far is Knight C6. But the trappy line is Bishop C5. After Bishop C5. So the fifth most popular move. It's still played over 25,000 times. <laughs> well, he's looking at the games of Lee Chess users. The trap is so incredible. It's because White's going to just play like the most common move. And if we go down like three or four more moves, like D6, again, most common move is D takes E. The most common move in this position is Knight E7. This is so beautiful. Knight E7. And again, most common move is d takes e7 so if you were to play this line statistically white is most likely to go down this variation and the, the whole point i should explain after my e7 pawn takes e7 we lost a knight but we win the queen with bishop f2 and this is why black is scoring very very high here Bishop takes f2. 420 people have gotten this with black. The trick is to free move me 7 to seem like a blunder. Exactly. So I'm going to get to that. But uh, yeah, we take, take, and take, and we were up a queen. Stockfish gives like minus almost 4. And it's, it's still like relatively unknown. Uh, I first saw this in like one of these Twitch. It was like a Twitch highlights reel where another streamer, GM Derek, Really? So I followed you first. Before we even play. Um, let's do this. Fall for it. And uh, believe it or not, I followed everyone back the day they followed me. I haven't been able to do it because I ran into a ceiling of... The key is then to pre-move 97. So when white takes, knight e7 is played instantly. White will think it's just like a, an accidental pre-move mouse slip. And white won't even think twice about not taking it, even though white has played some other moves. Um, white doesn't think takes, that. Yes, white is most likely to take here. I suppose if you're, if you're shilling, uh, this is like teaching people how to pickpocket. My past uh, games. Right? So d takes e7, and then we win the queen. And there are a few variations of this. Um, imagine white plays bishop f4 here. We can still set up the trap. Now, I, I, in my early days, for the first 1,200 followers, I literally followed every single person back who followed me. So if you followed me, I followed you that same day or within the day. Sometimes it took, like, there was a limit on how many people I could follow in a day. Actually has two different captures. So as it turns out, lose the queen to bishop takes f2. I ran into a ceiling. This opening is not meant for serious play. It's kind of a one, a one time trick. If white, like if white doesn't fall for it, I mean. I think it should throw this uh, disclaimer into a stream title. And then you're down a pawn. Um, but okay, it's still playable, and maybe there's some like uh risk analysis let's go back where it's worth taking the risk in the and game. i want to see if we can find something else have, have counterplay here maybe this should let's stop that so the n1 gambit how about the stafford gambit or the knockmanson gambit I don't see anything on the Nachmanson gambit, unless I'm spelling it wrong. Norwegian defense, Montevideo defense. I don't see that one. 
the Amara Gambit. Don't know anything about that opening. Pretty cool, I have to admit. The Amara opening. Play the Amari Stoudemire. Let's let's play the Amari Stoudemire opening with Knight H3. It's called the Amara opening. I don't know why. Okay, let's go here Knight F2 here. Can I play Danish Gambit? Of course. I think I played Danish in the very first game of the speed run, but I will play more. How do you even mispronounce what? Mispronounce what? The C3 D4. Do I do tests when you're preparing? <laughs> your um, sometimes. I don't think many people would play D takes E7 in that position either. I just took three pawns, and I think I've won the white side of that quite often. So the Amara opening, I definitely have not played this opening before. That's what it would be. But, well, but you know, I'm here in America. I grew up in America, and I speak American as my as my main language. So I'm all. I speak America. Of every word. All right. Hold on, I want to get that one again. Hold on. Pretty good. As my main language, so. How is my name pronounced in Japanese? Well, it'd be Hikaru. That's what it would be. But, well, but you know, I'm here in America. I grew up in America, and I speak American as my as my main language. So, I'm all about that American pronunciation of. Ever, ever. I wish I could clip that. All right, I can play D5. I speak yeah. America. Pretty good. So, a four Queen H5 ideas here. We need a Thargons for the eight months. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Whoa! Thank you to Shaggy for the five gifted. Thank you so much to Shaggy. Appreciate it. Thank you for the five gifted. Thank you. Oh, I have to resize the window in order for you to see this. Why is memory important in chess? Because generally, it's like remembering games or certain like pawn structures, like where the pawns are placed and other things. It helps for uh, for recalling it because then then into. All right. Meanwhile, game phrase, position, theme. How can I look for? Another subject. Search YouTube videos, chess videos by content. What I really want is something else. I like the idea. Banging pawns. Nicely done. Very nice link by uh, Ron, the Chess Vision AI. Click watch on Chess Vision. Hold on. I missed this. Uh... Multi-level marketing scams. I agree with you, Lauren. It is one of the reasons why I don't so actively promote I am Eric Rosen. I would more likely promote uh, Gotham Chess, even though he does something similar. He doesn't do it really all that often or so directly. A large enough proportion of Petrov's free wins, <laughs> exactly. Going back and catching up. Yeah, the the Stafford Gambit comes out of the Petrov. It's basically a reversed uh what do you call it? It's actually a reversed good opening with white, where it's equal when you play white, but if you play it as black, you're lo you're clearly worse. I mean, he is having fun. He is promoting chess as fun. And in case anyone was not here earlier, Chess Vision AI, by the way, is the link. Just to let everybody know that that was the link that Pegasus shared earlier. And it is quite instructive. I would love to do a hand and brain someday. That would be pretty cool. I spec American too. I don't think you spec American. I think you spec English. Because you're a Commonwealth country. I don't know if it's possible for you to spec American. 
only Americans can actually get away with that bad use of grammar and language. So, like Ford Explorer button. Got it. And so now you can look up the opening that you want to see. And so H3 is covered in this video. That's crazy. I need to go back. There we go. Bobby Fischer's 21 move brilliancy against Grandmaster Robert Byrne in the uh, 1964 U.S. Championship. Hi, everyone. It's Jerry. On December 18, 1963. Oh, 1963. Oh, wait. So the tournament runs across the Christmas holiday. So usually it's the 1963-64 U.S. Championship. So even though it's played in December of 1963, I believe it's called the 1964 U.S. Championship because it finishes. I have done Puzzle Racer before. Quite often, in fact. It is pretty cool to be able to do Puzzle Racer. Of course, the Queen's Gambit is going to come up, right? How about the Marshall Defense? Watch with Chess Vision AI. Christopher's like, I'm low rated. Call on me. Right. Knight F6. Knight F6 is a bad move because when I take, I got rid of your center pawn. And now later in the game, I can play e4. I could play it now, but theory says I should play knight f3 first. That, and that's too complicated for this class. That's the over 1400 class. Okay, now I, I got my center. Hooray for Ben. Now, this position right here is the famous game fine gold versus what super GM you've heard of, higher rated than a non. Close. <laughs> Fabiano Caruana. I, I, I won that game, and this is how our game started. Because I took all his pieces and he resigned. What? Yeah. Then, about 10 years later, I was like, Remember when I beat you? And he said, Did I play that? And I said, Yeah. And he went, Oh. How old was Fabiano Caruana? Yeah, 11. Yeah. <laughs> He's showing a game that he beats up on him as a kid. I a 10 year old last month, and we drew, and I was lucky. Okay. He's having a bit tournament at Peter's. Oh, not, not good. Oh. Not, there's good and there's not good. He's in last. Man. There's I'm going to click on the video for one moment just so that I can fast forward video. five seconds. So now he's out here. Good to call it teaching in chess. Students in Slack. What? Like he doesn't show it? Okay. That's a bad move. I tell people that's a bad move, then they all play it. Good memory. Now, there's a guy in Chicago who teaches chess. If you can call it teaching in chess. And he told me a funny story related to this class. Said, I tell my students when they're black, don't play knight f6, because they'll go here. Instead, play bishop c5. Then when they go here, you can take it. And they're like, wow, thanks for that advice. Then he says, about half the time or more, they forget and they go here. And I was like, yeah. And he says, and then I tell them, when you forget what I told you, and you go here, now I want you to play this move, because nobody knows that move. Then the person with whites could be like, what? What's that move? So that way, when black gets confused, and then realizes he got confused, he can confuse white. So I, I, I can see the kids now like, oh, man, knight g5. Oh, yeah, he told me to play here. I can see it now. Okay, so he's prepared for his kids to forget what he told them. And he, they forget about All right, I can't take it anymore. I'm afraid I can't take it anymore, guys. That one is just too much. 
Uh, that's exactly lending back to the video that Rogan encapsulated. Where I tell you to be wary of chess coaches who tell you what moves to make. Without teaching you anything about the understanding behind the moves. And that is crazy. That that almost that that whole sequence belongs in the other video. Just because I believe that's exactly how it transpired. Yes, you are already more qualified to coach. In fact, I think if you've hung out with me across so many streams, all of you are already more uh, markedly more qualified to teach than a lot of chess teachers out there. Because there are a lot of chess teachers that will just wheel out this book and have the kids memorize the moves without really looking at why those moves are played. And it's very sad. It is extremely, extremely sad. And I don't know what to say other than I'm sorry, for the most part. Now the lead chess window is coming back to the fold here. But the Chess Vision AI, that was very entertaining. I could get lost in that for quite a while, although I'm glad that I have not eaten. Otherwise, after that particular video, I would be in the other little room just out the door to the left. Or to the right, in this particular case. To the left. Is <laughs> just out the door to the left, I would be out there. I would definitely, definitely do as I say, not as I do. You might be surprised, Lauren. <laughs> I'm 12 queens, and I'm not even sure you're capable of one. <laughs> exactly. It is quite crazy. We are kibitzing bad coaching 101. So yeah, so our first game was a month after you first followed. So you didn't necessarily play right away in a lot of the stuff. Or maybe you did, and maybe we just never played. Maybe it was because we were doing arenas at that time. So what we literally need to do is go to January 27th, 2021, when we search the game profiles, uh, advanced search, and we want to search, not my opponent's name, oh wait, we want to go to Rogan Joe Sloan, or Kingslayer Sloan, sorry. I still slip back there. He's not online at the moment. And we want to do an advanced search of games, not by opponent, but by date. We want to see Rogan's games from, let's say, January 26th to February 1st. That's way too many, probably. And we will search, and we want them in ascending order. I love the advanced search. It is pretty amazing. So most of the time, Kingslayer Sloan is not playing. Oh, these don't really tell us anything, do they? They don't give us the events. Chances are, does not give us the event. No, he is very funny. And his, his streams, along with all of the others, are designed primarily for entertainment. And this is why I am, through instruction, only catering to 2% of the population, because it's been proven to me and eye-opened to me that I am basically 13 games found. 
that only says one year ago. I was just looking for a name that I would recognize or a time control that I would recognize back. I do not recognize any of these time controls in Rogue and Joe Sloan's uh, games from January 26th to February 1st of 2021. However, if we go to 227, and over here we go to to say 220 I can fix my approach to do both. In fact, I've decided that I am going to do that. It is the Kingslayer Sloan, the 3XK. Make sure you follow him. Make sure that you follow him, please. He is perhaps the most underrated streamer at the moment. Oh, this is definitely it. And it was this game. Five plus five is our time control. We wouldn't have, and then three plus two. You played uh, Ginka, the Bulgarian. I wonder if Ginka is playing in the Olympiad. Should we take a look? She actually connected with me on Instagram at whatever moment shortly after or around the time when her accounts changed and whatnot. Uh-oh. Not that game. Florence Campomani's Birthday Arena. So it does show you the name of the birthday arena. So shortly after... The Florencio Campomanes Birthday Arena. <laughs> yeah, because the arenas are unfair that way, honestly. Because with the arena format, I am actually going to play someone in the lower half of the table every single day. If you divide the table in half in a Swiss, you divide the, the thing, and the top half plays against the bottom half, and I'm always going to play someone in the bottom half every single day. With an arena, it is nice because you do get a little bit of rating protection. And maybe, just maybe that's what Logic didn't like, uh, the rating protection, because the players in our arenas are too strong for Logic. But still profound, profound. Let's look at the tournament. I love the fact that you can bring up these tournaments. And then, you can, of course, you can download all the games from these tournaments. But literally go back in my history of games, go to each and every event, and download all the games from each of the events as a whole in order to make a chessable book out of the, out of the tactics. I was rated 2,000 in... Three plus two. I hear someone calling my name. Okay. With a really terrible performance. Bishop F5, C4. Let's download all those games. Open them up in cheese base.
That's interesting. Download my games, download our games. And then study them. Yep. So we had 12 people in this particular arena. Oops. Now this one, see, says violated Lee Chess terms of service. Mark. As opposed to Ginka, who closed her own account in order to create another one. Which is something that people have said that said, oh, this account is closed. They must have done something wrong. But no, she actually changed her name to another one at the time. Navarre is playing against Alakai in defense. All right, let's get back. So the first arena that you played was on the 22nd of February. Our anniversary dates. Um, I do want to look at this with Chess 24, though. So let's head back to this particular setup. And I have it designed for Chess 24, really, so I should really rename this one Chess 24 Full Screen. So Rachek, hold on, we wanted to look at uh, the women's, right? We're on the women's. I wanted to look at Bulgaria. I wanted to see if Ginka is playing. She's always been a pretty reliable member and she shows up when she can. Uh, so Bulgaria. I guess she's not strong enough yet. She's only about 2100 or so. Twenty. She's like edging on master. So Ginka is not strong enough to be a member of the uh, four and a half out of five. Gabriella on board four. Wow. I know the other day we also did chess.com. We did their Olympiad coverage and they had all the boards in reverse order. Board four was the first board that you saw. It was very, very unusual how that happened. Elite Chess Master Database doesn't filter by year. It filters by top rating. The highest possible rating. <laughs> That's cool. That is very, very cool. Uh, that you're looking into the old games. I should clarify, Lauren is looking into the old games versus me. Navarra Rapport. Let's go to um, Navarra Rapport. Wow, Shanklin really, really whizzed away that one. So did Caruana. So, unfortunately, my statement about them not being the favorites. We're basically going to get one point out of this round. I think that Shanklin is losing. No, we're, we're, we're going to split 2-2, two -two, right? We're losing that one. We're losing Shanklin's board, but we're winning Dominguez's board. Just checking. The report is playing for Switzerland. No, um, Hungary. All 
I can't believe that I'm even thinking about this. Iran has already won two and a half. And they're about to finish three and a half versus Australia. No, it's not Hungary. Rapport plays for... I don't know, the whole, the whole event is going to hell in a handbasket. It really is. There it is. Czech Republic. Navarra. Let's head up. Yeah, his opponent does not know that the current theory frowns upon um, bishop to g4. Current theory recommends uh, d takes e5, or possibly even c6 in this particular modern main line. Bishop g4, the old main line, is known to be clearly worse for a variety of reasons. Uh, it says white is slightly better, but this might as well be a solid one. Basically, a solid one. White is much better or clearly better, however you want to look at it. G6 is in the newest of books because the dynamics of G6 um, is what black is trying to play for a win. The problem with g6 is that the exchange variation is terrible for black. g6 is practically losing because in, let's just say we play the exchange variation. Let's just say we play c4, takes and takes. Uh, c takes d6 followed by g6 is just plain losing because of white's later h4, h5 plans. It's just plain losing. Nobody plays the alakine with uh, the exchange variation with Jesus. So therefore, in our main line, 3xk, if we play knight f3, and if black plays g6 according to the box, then white just plays c4, and after knight to b6, e takes d6, and c takes d6, and we're back to being very close to winning. I guess the only difference is that white's knight is on f3. So it, it, it slows down the possibility of playing h4, h5. But I'm not entirely sure how much that is uh, as valid or as reasonable. Trying to put this over the old lead chest window. I'll make the old lead chest window disappear for a moment. That'll be easier. So. Yeah, I don't really need to see my. Uh, my. Jiggies make this that much bigger. So, honestly, the best move for black is d takes e5 in this position, uh, followed by c6. Now, objectively, this doesn't give I, I disagree with the plus 0.77, but honestly, the knight is much more valuable on that square, as we've already talked about, among other things. In general, we just don't play the alkynes defense. Comes after c6. Is it that much better? c4, knight to c7. Yeah, I've never had much luck with that. Well, in the Discord, if you follow the general post by the 3XK, I'm going to plug the Discord in the socials. Just now, YouTube subscriptions needed. Instagram, Twitter, and the Discord is the last link there. Basically, in the general section, there's a nice bit on chunking. Basically, going over information and classifying it 
for yourself is key. Going over information constantly like we are doing right now is key. Uh, just noting that A, bishop to g4 lends itself to very poor practices by block. Yep. And in this position, black has to take back with the pawn. Usually it's e takes d6, c takes d6. Sometimes d5 if the knight were on c6. But since the knight's not on c6, I guess it's, uh, I guess it's just guarding this this pawn with a pawn, like b3. Let's take a quick peek at what happened. He chooses b3 straight away. Keeps the two bishops. Maintains a massive space advantage. Knight already improving in value. Knight already improving in value like crazy. And all the pieces are just appreciating and gaining in value as we speak. The H pawn, as we talked about, breaking down the pawn structure on that side of the board. Bishop versus knight. White has the pawn majority on the queen side. This is a very technical win for the white pieces. Very little that black can do about it. This might force the trade of queens or moving the knight. Uh-oh. Claudia? No? What's up? Could be the same time as yesterday that we draw a close to the stream. Let me put this in this here so I can hear. I don't know if you guys can hear her. Comparing most players to Carlson is a mistake. In any event, everyone. We have had the music off for a little while. We will end on that same note. Um, tomorrow we will have I'm going to finish with one of my favorite songs as we uh, send the stream over to the birthday girl. Please wish her a happy birthday. Anyway, thank you, everyone. It has been a pleasure. Please join us as we're about to wish the birthday girl as she's doing a 24-hour stream. Mad Quick Chess in the audience. Lauren. MQC, he was hiding back there. He was outed by the credits. Chess with Obi, thank you for the... Thank you, Kingslayer Sloan, the 3XK, for being here. Yeetenheimers, the new followers, Zomniak, Zomniak, Nico for the gift subscription to Chess with OV, and the raid by Kingslayer Sloan. Is there life one more?